Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ancient Discovery Channel. I hope you enjoy this video. When it comes to well-known ancient invertebrates, besides trilobites, the ammonites are probably the most familiar. However, just like trilobites, ammonites are also unfamiliar creatures to many. I often get asked if ammonites are extinct. You see, these ammonite shells can still be found swimming in today's oceans. Look at this fresh ammonite shell I bought. Are you sure it went extinct along with the dinosaurs? This one with a shell and eight legs should be an ammonite, right? Look at how straight its shell is. Why is it called an ammonite? Don't fool me, this is clearly a seashell. Why is it called an ammonite? Oh, I recognize this one. Maybe it's my headphone cable. Nice. So, it's time for me to tell you a new story. Today, I will share with you the fascinating and bittersweet evolutionary story of ammonites. Let's begin. The story of ammonites starts around 440 million years ago. At the end of the Ordovician period. At that time, the dominant creatures in Earth's oceans were the first-generation tentacle monsters known as the Nautiloidea. However, back then, the Nautiloidea were not as fiercely competitive as they are today. The fossils they left behind mostly resembled animal horns. So they were commonly known as Camaroceras. As we mentioned in a previous video, with their superior eyesight, Better imaging quality compared to other animals. Explosive jet propulsion system. And powerful and agile tentacles and beak-like mouths. The Camaroceras became the undisputed rulers of the seas during that era. They were like the fish and shrimp of today. Dominating the ecological niches of all swimming creatures in the ocean. The Camaroceras family was diverse. Some, like the Endocerida, chose to grow larger. Just like the elder gods in Cthulhu mythos. Spreading fear throughout the seas. Some, like the Ascocerida, chose to become bulkier. Resembling indescribable monsters from Cthulhu mythos. And some, like the Oncocerida, chose to twist themselves. Including their descendants which eventually evolved into the novelist genus we see today, thereby extending this ancient family's existence for millions of years. However, amidst all the hustle and bustle, there was a group of Camaroceras that stood out. They were known as the Orthocerida. As the name suggests, their shells appeared plain and unremarkable. But as we know, most individuals who yearn for a peaceful life often possess hidden talents. The Orthocerida were no exception. In simple terms, their evolution primarily focused on reproduction. After all, the Camaroceras were the rulers of their time. Just like medieval nobility, they emphasized quality over quantity in reproduction. Even though the Nautilus is no longer the ocean's ruler today, it still retains an aristocratic demeanor. Perhaps the Orthocerida couldn't gain an advantage in the competition with other Camaroceras. So they proactively lowered their status and adopted a strategy resembling that of smaller marine creatures, making their eggs numerous and small. Furthermore, their newly hatched offspring, although less developed compared to other Camaroceras, had their advantages. These young Orthocerida could drift like plankton, traveling further into the ocean. However, this strategy yielded unexpected results. By the end of the Ordovician period, the Camaroceras dynasty began to decline, and many Camaroceras orders experienced setbacks. Yet, the Orthocerida flourished and became a new rising force, seizing the territories of the declining nobility as if they were upstarts. Not to mention the devastating late Ordovician extinction event that occurred over 440 million years ago, known as the late Ordovician extinction. This event wiped out 85% of marine species, leaving the seas empty. 
In the aftermath of this catastrophe, the Orthoceridae's method of prolific reproduction enabled them to dominate the ocean with great efficiency, making them the new aristocracy within the Camarocerus family. <laughs> However, everything in the world comes with a price tag set by the Elder Gods. Soon, fierce competition for reproduction within the Orthocerida intensified. To secure territory, a small group of them started producing more and smaller eggs with faster development. Finally, in the early Devonian period, approximately 400 million years ago, this intense competition among the Orthocerida reached a boiling point. Twisted minds eventually twisted their bodies, giving birth to a new kind of tentacle monster, the Bactridida. These creatures are the strangest beings in the tentacle monster family. They are the descendants of the Camarocerus, once the rulers of the oceans. However, their fate seemed to be limited to mere survival. In order to achieve the utmost development speed, the early growth process of the Bactridida subclass was primarily focused on elongation rather than thickness. Unbeknownst to the Bactridida, the threat of extinction was right before their eyes. With the rise of jawfish during the Devonian period, the tables turned against their Camarocerus relatives, who became prey for the jawed fish, especially in the top predator ecological niche. The jawed fish had the upper hand, resulting in a one-sided slaughter of the Camarocerus. By the time the Bactridida realized it, they had become one of the few survivors in the entire tentacle monster family. They seemed destined to become the second generation of tentacle monsters, surviving only by struggling to exist. The Bactridida looked at their distorted remnants, wondering if the descendants of the once dominant Camarocerus, the rulers of the ocean, could only eke out a meager existence. However, the harsh reality was already at their doorstep. With jawed fish completely occupying every corner of the ocean, Escaping from the gaping jaws of these new marine overlords became an urgent matter. At that time, the Bactridida didn't know that this life-threatening survival crisis inadvertently pulled them out of the vortex of fierce internal competition within their own species. Finally, the Bactridida had the opportunity to shift their evolutionary focus from reproduction to other aspects. This marked the beginning of the greatest transformation in the evolutionary history of the Cephalopoda. Some Bactridida realized that their low defensive shells were useless against the dominant jawed fish. They decided to change their approach and focus on enhancing their swimming skills and agility. Their descendants would eventually evolve into belemnoids and the cephalopods we see today, such as squid and octopuses. We won't delve into the details of squid and octopuses in this video. But if you're interested, please let me know through likes, comments, and subscriptions. Meanwhile, some Bactridida returned to a more traditional strategy, strengthening their armor. Contrary to our intuition, in the early days of jawed fish, only a few of them, such as Dunkleistas, posed a real threat. Most others struggled to break through the mainstream armor through brute force. Therefore, these smaller jawed fish tended to adopt a different strategy, simply swallowing their prey whole, taking advantage of their larger body size. So, this group of Bactridida came up with a clever idea. They gradually restored their ancestors' robust shells and made them more curved, making it difficult to be swallowed in one bite. This evolutionary path quickly transformed their shells into a spiral shape. As a result, it became challenging for smaller jawed fish to swallow them whole, while larger ones did not pay attention to such small prey. This gave the Bactritida a lifeline and a chance to evolve into what they truly became ammonites. Now, it's time to celebrate as our main characters finally take the stage. Early ammonites, such as Urbanoceras, were essentially Bactridida with tightly coiled shells. However, they quickly realized the advantages of this body structure. 
Their originally straight shells had significant advantages when swimming in a straight line. But when it came to changing direction, the rotational resistance was substantial. By coiling their shells, they became more agile swimmers. Thus, species like agoniotites emerged, tightly coiling their shells into a unified structure. Making them different from their ancestors, the Bactridida. What's even more crucial is that from agoniotites onward, the ammonite family gradually freed themselves from the elongated body structure of their ancestors, the Bactridida. Whether it was Camarasaurus, Bactridida, or ammonites, their shells could grow to considerable lengths. However, most of this length was partitioned into a series of compartments resembling air-filled chambers called air cells. Inside these cells, only a small amount of thin nitrogen gas was present. Their actual bodies existed in a small space at the opening of the shell, called the body chamber. Compared to the Bactritida, the body chamber of agoniotites had already increased significantly in size. This meant that they had evolved robust bodies similar to their ancient ancestors. The Camarasaurus, and likely possessed excellent swimming abilities. If the Ammonites had merely combined the reproductive abilities of the Bactridida with the robust bodies of the Camarasaurus, their fate would have likely ended up like trilobites. The true greatness of Ammonites lies in their revolutionary innovation, the intricate sutures. In simple terms, most tentacle monsters construct airtight compartments within their shells by building a simple wall inside. This works fine, but these compartments contain air. If tentacle monsters wanted to dive into the deep sea, the excessive water pressure could crush their shells. This problem trapped the Camarasaurus family in shallow waters for a long time. However, the Ammonites found a new solution. We all know that a flat sheet of paper is easy to bend and cannot support heavy objects. But if you fold the paper back and forth a few times, it gains strength to withstand pressure. This is precisely how ammonites modified their air-filled compartments. Early ammonites simply folded the walls of these compartments a few times. But soon the folding became more complex. Consequently, the contact area between the wall and the shell became a complex series of curves, which is the key feature that distinguishes ammonites from other tentacle monsters, the sutures. In reality, the evolution of ammonites can be described as the progressive complexity of sutures. When ammonites reached their peak, the walls of their air-filled compartments had become as intricate and interwoven as tree roots and their sutures became mesmerizingly complex. Thanks to this remarkable design, the ammonite fossils we discover today have become some of the most artistically appealing fossils. Here, it's important to emphasize that the sutures grow internally within the shells of the nautilus or ammonites and cannot be seen from the outside. This design maintains the volume and thickness of the shell while endowing ammonites with superior resistance to pressure compared to their Camarasaurus ancestors. It allowed ammonites to explore the depths of the ocean that their ancestors could not reach, granting them true freedom in the seas. Even more surprising, this complex air-filled compartment structure enables ammonites to adjust the water content within the compartments rapidly, utilizing the surface tension of water. This greatly enhances their agility, enabling them to compete with any similarly sized contender in swimming ability. The catastrophic extinction event at the end of the Ordovician period caused the Camarasaurus to fall from their divine pedestal. Today, as the descendants of these fallen gods, the Ammonites have undergone a remarkable transformation. In the future, they will utilize another major extinction event to reclaim their ancient status as elder gods. The story of Ammonites is not over yet. But today's story concludes here. In the next video, we will continue to explore the fascinating tale of Ammonites. So, goodbye, my friends.
please subscribe, comment, and like to support me. I will continue to provide more evolutionary stories of prehistoric creatures.